is this even going on about? Oh, fuck no. <laughs> I don't understand any of this. Jeez. Okay, mm. I guess I can see. on target or officially off target. Mm. <laughs> this is kind of <sighs> fuck. Oh, baby, hey, <laughs> hi, baby. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs> Come here, like your kiss. Mm. <laughs> mm. just been studying a little bit in the library. It's um, going alright so far, but uh, not really the best. Hey, um, why don't we move somewhere else and uh, I don't have to whisper so much around other people. Yeah. <laughs> We won't talk too loudly still, but this is a nice area, right? Nice little closed off seats and no one else is around, but still a library, so I uh, probably shouldn't talk too loudly, huh? <laughs> I, uh, I see that bag of bubble tea you got there. <laughs> Did you really get bubble tea for me? Oh, <laughs> thank you so much, baby. You're the best boyfriend I could have asked for. <laughs> Alright, let's see what you got. Oh, you even remembered my order. Passion fruit jasmine green tea with quarter ice and rainbow and mango jelly. <laughs> I'm impressed you remember. <laughs> Thank you so much, baby. Ah. Uh, Mmm, it tastes really good. <laughs> Do you remember our first date? Yeah, we went to bubble tea. <laughs> this is the same chain, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good one. I like these guys. The quality of their tea is much better, I would say, than a lot of the other chains around this area. I don't know. I just think... Some places they use cheap tea and then put an excessive amount of sugar. But then when you order less sugar or less ice, it just tastes bad. But these guys, their teas are really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess it is a bit nerdy to be uh, into tea, but what can you do? <laughs> I enjoy my bubble tea, I enjoy my regular tea. I guess I'm just a bit of an old man, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm not the biggest fan of pearls. I see you've got pearls in your tea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I'm just not a fan of how chewy they are. I mean, just sitting in your mouth and chewing and chewing and chewing and not really getting anywhere kind of ruins the taste of the tea as well. So, yeah, I'm um, not too into pearls, but if you like them, well, I guess I can't really complain. Just means that I'm less likely to try a tea, which means more for you. <laughs> Come give me a little kiss. tea shop just at the bottom of this tower, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, how have you been liking it so far? I mean, university, that is. You just started at University of Carhalen recently, didn't you, baby? 
Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I have been here for a few years, so I'm pretty used to it around here. It's kind of unique for a university, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I mean, where else in Australia are you going to find a bunch of tall-ass buildings in the middle of a bunch of leafy green suburbs? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to complain if it means that we get the, the latest and greatest of facilities. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't really know about the history of UOK, don't you? Oh, yeah, I mean, most people here shorten University of Carhal into UOK, but I guess it just sounds like a question, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, UOK. Yes, I know you're fine, babe. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that, yeah, Carhalen is this set of fucking skyscrapers in the middle of a suburb. <laughs> it's a, a bit rare for Australia. Usually the skyscrapers and other tall buildings are closer to the city, but we're a fair bit out here. A fair bit far away from the city that is. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. It did used to be two small buildings, just like kind of cottage or community centre type buildings. I mean, they're still there. They're across the road, but now the main actual campus are these sets of towers that kind of dwarf the rest of the subway, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I mean... Even when you're like five, ten kilometers away, you can still sometimes see the buildings peeking out over the horizon. Yeah. I don't know. Those old buildings, I never really heard what they were for. I know that prior to 20, 30 years ago, Carhalen was some sort of small educational institute, but past that I don't really know. I do know that like 20 years ago or something, they got major financial backing from some new people on the board. So they built some high-rise apartment type skyscrapers in the middle of these suburbs and the new UOK was born. <laughs> they became a relatively new public university and now we're studying here. <laughs> yeah. It is a nice uni. You know, it's only 20, 30 years old. Everything's relatively new. I mean, other universities still have modern facilities and stuff like that, but I don't know any other university that's almost entirely skyscrapers. <laughs> I guess it is pretty cool. Escalators everywhere taking lifts to get to classes, going from one building to another through like a sky bridge kind of thing. It's pretty unique. <laughs> Though, I do have to wonder if something else is going on. I mean, yeah, you know I've been here for a couple of years now and I was only turned into a vampire a couple of months ago. Well, it was last year at this point, but months ago, so I've had some time as a human and now the rest of my time will be as a vampire, but the thing I was kind of thinking about recently, when I hang out with you guys, you know, like our friend group, you all smell like humans? <laughs> this sounds ridiculous, but I can... You remember I told you a while ago that I can smell other people's blood. I know when you're walking to my house because I can smell your blood approaching. Same case with other humans. I can smell when there's humans around. But whenever I come to Kahalin, I... I smell other types of blood, and definitely not animals' bloods either, 
I know, dogs, cats, birds, they all have blood, but it's very different from human blood. It's a similar kind of sweetness to human blood, but it's not exactly the same. Animal blood doesn't taste sweet at all. Ah, uh, don't worry about the animal blood bit. <laughs> anyway, it's almost as if there's other kinds of people here. I mean, I was turned into a vampire by that person, who I can only assume was a vampire. So maybe they come here to study? I do know they were a university student. I don't know if they came to Kahalan or not. We never got that far into it, but... Maybe there's other vampires here? No, I don't really know. I mean, there isn't really much point stressing about it. <laughs> but it just makes me wonder... Where are the other vampires? I know I was turned into one, but I would have thought that I might have met some other vampires by now. But I haven't. I've had to figure out everything for myself. Which, I mean, it's not the first time I've done that. But uh, it hasn't been fun. Like, when I first discovered I had magic. You remember that story, right? I accidentally cut myself, I was walking into that dark hallway, and I noticed that glowing, just the faintest glow from my finger. And then suddenly the cut was healed. I don't know what that was about. But it got me curious. So in the past week, I'd been thinking about that feeling when I'd accidentally cut myself. That faint glow. What was that feeling like inside? It was almost as if there was something alive, just fixing it for me, fixing it in place of my body. So I took that feeling and I concentrated it in my hands. Just think about some sort of ethereal or magical form just flowing into my hand. And it was only yesterday that I started to feel this brilliant warmth in my hand and before I knew it there was a flame <laughs> there was a flame just sitting above my hand like in Avatar The Last Airbender or Legend of Korra <laughs> like firebenders I had a flame just sitting in my hand and, of course, I immediately put it out, because <laughs> I've never firebended before. I don't think this is bending either. Surely it's just magic. <laughs> Some sort of vampirical magic. I don't know. But it was so weird. I mean, it's good to know that I guess it's magic turned me into a vampire, a vampire that uh, apparently likes feeding off his boyfriend, <laughs> but that's what happened to me recently, <laughs> I'm just hoping that I can get more answers soon, I don't have to be at Car Harlan today, but I don't know, I've been coming more often recently in the hopes of finding somebody. When I first came back, the first time after I got turned into a vampire, the first thing that struck me was how different it smelled. It didn't smell like any other shopping center or the city or your or a friend's house. It didn't smell like humans. It was as if there was some concentration of something else. Like I said before, not an animal. Maybe it is vampires. But, I don't know, I still look the same as I did before. I mean, 
and movies and stuff, vampires are pale, but I'm not pale. I have brown skin. <laughs> and I'm not any paler than I was before. So, I don't know. I can't recognize vampires. I can only hope that I bump into one. <laughs> For all I know, there's some secret compartment where vampires and other people hang out. <laughs> I don't know. I just... I really appreciate you, baby. I really appreciate that you've been here to support me and help me through this. But you're just as clueless as I am. I just want to find people that know. <sighs> no. Anyway. <laughs> There's no use ruminating about that, is there? <laughs> oh, what was I studying? <laughs> well, I was studying... This, uh, they're called adrenergic receptors. Essentially, they're a type of receptor on the cells of bodies. Of the cells of bodies? No, cells in your body and they get targeted by hormones maybe you've heard of adrenaline that's one thing also noradrenaline that gets targeted by adrenergic receptors and they have different effects on the body the major two subtypes of adrenoceptors adrenergic receptors are alpha and beta they do have further subtypes, but it's not important. What's important is that it acts on your sympathetic nervous system. Essentially just your subconscious nervous system. Specifically, that part of it responsible for fight or flight. When you're in that sort of situation, your brain might release noradrenaline or adrenaline. For example, if you're faced with a big scary vampire out in the wild <laughs> you know a handsome one such as myself <laughs> you'd want your body to react appropriately to help you run away or fight the vampire so that you don't get bitten <laughs> anyway for example the sympathetic nervous system with noradrenaline adrenaline hormone can increase your heart rate so you know more blood to muscles um another interesting one is that it can cause the sphincters in your stomach and bladder to contract which essentially means you don't feel hungry and you don't need to go to the loo pretty important if you're running away from a vampire you probably don't need to stop and take a piss <laughs> the other interesting one and kind of relevant is in the lungs it can cause bronchodilation which is essentially just increasing the size of air passages in your lungs and that is very important for asthma medication so another important thing is that medications is they can be selective that is either for the alpha or beta subtypes or non-selective and that's for alpha beta generally so asthma medication you know salbutamol or uh, sorry you probably know ventolin as the brand name hashtag not sponsored is a beta 2 adrenergic selective agonist Essentially what that means is that it's specific to the beta 2 subtype and it acts in favor of that specific receptor. So the most important thing for asthma medication is that it relaxes the smooth muscle of the bronchi, that is the lungs. So what essentially means is that salbutamol or ventolin helps your lungs to open up during an asthma attack when they are closed up <laughs> uh, and side effects do include raising your heart rate which is called tachycardia and also causing headache and flushing so 
got to be careful with these medications. So yeah, that was a bit of a quick spiel on what I was studying before you came, baby. <laughs> but, um, probably is time to get back into studying, isn't it? <laughs> Slacking off is very fun, but studying is equally important. I know. How about we study for a little bit? Maybe two hours? One hour, and then a couple minute break, and then another hour. And after study, we can go home and cuddle. <laughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you, baby? <laughs> yeah, thought so. So, you focus on your work, and I'll focus on mine. And we'll make sure that your eyes stay on your work, and no hands go wandering. <laughs> Oh yes, I know, you want to hold my hand so much, baby. <laughs> and you can go home, play some video games, cuddle a little bit, and I don't know, would you be interested in a little bit of a bite, baby? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Alright, baby, let's focus on our work, and then we'll go home for a little bit of a relaxation and fun. How about that? <laughs> hey there. Thank you so much for supporting me and listening to this video. I'd like to give a huge shout out to my patrons, especially my pack alphas. You guys help me a lot. Um, and your support means the world. Actually, if you're listening to this, um, there still might be some time to get your hands on a custom audio if you are a pack alpha by a certain date. Be sure to check out the information in the comments below. So, I'd like to give a huge thank you to my pack alphas. Specifically, I, Arlene, Arthur, Blaine Bryant, CJ Latimer, Danny, Danny again, Dorothy, Evie1996, Gautier Knight, Grace, Haven, I'm Epic Taco, Imani Wallace, Isaac, Geordie, JPEG, Kyle, Louis, Moore, Makata, no iconic name for me, Nova, Oreo, Brain Mitchell, Sami, SJ Spider, Sky, Stormageddon, The Bybrit, Taikwasha, Wolfga, and Yesenia. <laughs> Thank you so much to them and everyone else for supporting making these videos. I remember when this list was just two people. <laughs> that is two patrons overall, not just two pack alphas. <laughs> if you listen all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much, and I will see you around. Bye bye <laughs>